How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be talking about my experience in the past month or so with three different virtual private server providers which I attempted to use to host my Don't Starve Together community server. So this was a server that I wanted to have at least eight people on and reach at least day 500 before serious issues would start cropping up. So the three that I tried and that I'm going to be comparing here today are Vulture, DigitalOcean and Linode. All of these three provide virtual private servers that you can use to host your dedicated servers on in the cloud. So this would be in contrast to hosting your Don't Starve Together dedicated server directly on your computer. One of the main reasons you want to do this is if your home connection is kind of lousy, if it's slow, if it has a lot of latency and it makes it almost impossible for other people to connect to your computer with a decent connection, you'll probably want to look at a dedicated server that's hosted in the the cloud and that's what these companies like Vulture, DigitalOcean and Linode provide. But before we start, I want to give a disclaimer and that is that I am not a programmer. I am not a Don't Starve Together modder and I am not a system administrator. So this is sort of from a layman's perspective as somebody who is interested in the administrative side of servers, for example, but at the same time has no workplace experience or educational background in it. So the first provider that I tried was called Vulture. In terms of ease to get started, Vulture was most certainly the most straightforward. I had no problems signing up funding my account or actually getting started and they actually provided some discounts that gave me about five dollars worth of credit to run my dedicated server without ha having to uh, pay anything out of pocket myself. Now I chose to go with the twenty dollar per month plan and with this plan you get two CPUs and four gigabytes of RAM. Now with Vulture the server that I had hosted with them I left up for about 800 days. By day 800, the server was almost unplayable by anything more than two people, I would say. This was entirely a performance limitation, and it was mostly due to just a gradual buildup of entities in the world, apparently, that caused it to slow down. Once I reset the server itself, I went ahead and deployed a test sort of scenario. I threw down 100 spiders, 100 frogs, and I let them chase me around a little bit. And that was a pretty decent entity trial, and as you could probably see by some of the results here. It peaked a little high, maybe 82, 85, um, but by and large it was able to handle that with just one player and even when two players entered the game we still didn't see any performance issues. But this of course is day one and as the game wears on you're going to see the number of entities that can be supported on one screen at a time drop pretty significantly. There also seems to be around a 5-7% to increase in CPU usage for each additional player that joins the game depending upon what they're doing. This, these are not very static numbers at all by any means. Please don't commit them too much to heart, but that was just the general trend that I was seeing simply by watching the process monitor for uh, the game while it was playing. Keep in mind that on my 800 day server that I mentioned before, I was running a handful of quality of life mods, nothing too significant, but those could also have an impact of course on your performance depending upon which mods you run and how many you choose to run. After Vulture, I moved on to DigitalOcean. Now, my server at DigitalOcean is nowhere near as old as the one on Vulture, but we've gotten about uh, 120, 30 days onto it so far and it has performed admirably, I have to say. I went with the flexible droplet plan. This gave me two gigabytes of memory and two virtual CPUs for a $5 discount. Once again, the plans with DigitalOcean are quite similar to the ones with Vulture. In terms of getting signed up, I didn't necessarily appreciate the fact that DigitalOcean required you to create a unique username. I'm personally against this as an email address is usually all the username that I ever require. There was also an issue logging into the virtual private server with an SSL certificate as when I was using Putty to connect to a user that I had created, it wouldn't allow me to connect to that account unless I disabled my SSL certificate to begin with. So if you're thinking of in terms of security and you just want to create a user account that you can easily log into, it seems to be a little bit more difficult with DigitalOcean. That was something that Vulture allowed me to do that DigitalOcean didn't and it caused me, I'd say, an hour's worth of headaches trying to go around it because by default uh, DigitalOcean 
wants you to have an SSL certificate to log into it. And if you don't, that you will have to set up your virtual private server. You have to click the reset the password, then they'll email you the password, then you'll enter that password in, then you have to change that password again before you actually get like your root password for the server if you're not using your SSL certificate. However, once up and running, I would say the server performed quite admirably. Uh, this server has crashed more during gameplay sessions than uh, the one with Vulture. At this point, it's pretty much once a day. I'll notice that uh, the game the game server itself will just shut down. It won't just kick some people, it will just completely shut down. But at the same time, we've been able to have more people on the server running those same mods that I had with my previous Megabase. But at the same time, I would say we were able to fit in at least an additional two players on the regular. So whereas the one with Vulture regularly capped out at around five players before we started noticing performance issues, the one here hosted here with Digital Ocean started capping at a, out at around seven players before we started noticing performance issues. Keep in mind that one way you can circumvent performance issues on both of these services is by simply having half of the players play on the caves world and half of them play on the overworld and this means that the load itself is split up quite evenly between both of your CPU cores. In addition to this, afterwards I went ahead and reset that Megabase server to a plain vanilla server and I did the same test by spawning in 100 spiders and 100 frogs and let them chase me around and the performance issue the performance was almost the same as vulture but I would say maybe it was five or seven percent better the last one here is Linode and I've only tested this one briefly its plans are much the same as Vulture. There's nothing too surprising here. You'll get the exact same options as if you were using Vulture. So there's nothing too much to go through here. $20 a month will get you with the four gigabytes of RAM and see two CPU cores all in the same virtual private server. As mentioned before, I don't actually have a Megabase story for Linode here, uh, but when it came to signing up, it was pretty straightforward. I didn't have any real problems signing up. And the setup was also a breeze compared to DigitalOcean, which was having those SSL certificate issues. Linode lets you set a root password as soon as you deploy your virtual private server. So there was no email tag associated with getting an actual root password for your virtual private server. In the same spider and frog test that I did, Linode once again seemed to perform about the same as DigitalOcean, but performed maybe 5% better than Vulture. So if you're looking for a conclusion here, I would say if you're looking at any of these options to host your dedicated server for Don't Start Together, expect to have about five players maximum playing on these and expect 500 days or so of easy play time before you start running into severe performance issues when you have the entire team all on one shard. I know this is a little bit disappointing, but there is really no scalability here with any of these plans as the performance issues due to the CPU are the problems that usually crop up and I don't personally know of how to make the game load balance better on the CPUs. Uh, at the moment, it seems very single-threaded. So you might want to look at, at a service that actually provides game-specific servers or something like Amazon Web Services, AWS, uh, with their E2C instances because they have an overdrive option that allows you to use more processor cycles and should be allocated to you for an additional price during those peaks of high demand. If you are not interested in going with either of those other two options and are interested in having a virtual private server that you can directly control yourself without the costs associated with Amazon AWS, I would recommend DigitalOcean for simplicity because they have the flexible droplet option which is going to cost you $5 per month less if you go with the two gigabytes of memory, which should be sufficient for five players. Or I'd recommend you go with Linode, both because uh, Linode offers the same plan if you're looking at something a little bit more complicated, you can do $5 a month and split both game world shards onto different virtual private servers for $5 a month. You can save a like $10 a month doing it this way and you'll get the better performance that Linode has as well as the ease of setup that Vulture did not really have compared to Linode when it came to just simply being able to enter an admin password for your instances for your virtual private service and not having to actually deal with SSL certificates. So unfortunately Vulture takes third place here. It performed fairly well for me but I've I had people complain about performance issues while we were playing. This was, of course, the one that I played the longest on. But there are a couple of problems here with Vulture, namely that their performance seems to be weaker than both DigitalOcean and Linode. And their best plan here is for $5, much the same as Linode. You get the exact same memory as Linode, one CPU, 
five dollars there's really no reason here you get a slightly bigger solid state drive for your storage but really for don't starve together that's not needed so there's really no advantage to going with vulture so i'd choose number one i would say digital ocean ease of use you get uh, it's five dollars cheaper if you want to deploy the entire don't stuff together dedicated server onto one virtual private server or go linode if you're interested in doing a little bit more tinkering and you'd like to save an extra five dollars by deploying the don't starve together server across two different virtual private servers one for the caves and one for the overworld so i hope this helped you out once again i want to make clear that i am by no means a professional in any of these areas and i could have overlooked some very obvious things these are simply an account of my experiences and the conclusions that i reached after spending about a month of spare time researching and testing these available options so thank you very much for watching as always and i hope to see you next time